I have to expose this point right now. I spoke to this brother after the Jubilee debate. And then I was speaking to him and I asked him, I was like, bro, you're not really an ex-Muslim, are you? You said your dad was a Jew, so you're half Jew, yeah, half you, you, Christian. I was like, wondering, where is his Muslim background? He no, never no, listen, listen, I, 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 I literally asked him, I was like, you're not really Muslim, are you? He looked me dead in the eyes, wallahi. And he's like, no, I'm not. And he didn't finish right there. He said, I told them that I wasn't. But they gave me the role anyway. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to The Three Muslims. I know it's been a while, but alhamdulillah, we're good to be back. Just a quick disclaimer, Jubilee, they posted the video. Unfortunately, it was not uncut and raw. So we are going to be responding to a lot of different things that people have been commenting about. And before we go in, check the timestamps in the description box, inshallah, for specific parts to fast forward. me would be like the issue of the hijab which I know a lot of people will counter so the Quran says women have to cover the khaymar to cover up so that they don't tempt um, the men and then the hij I will say the Quran does technically say men's hijab is their gaze the male gaze and I just that just seems a little silly to me beyond that like in the Quran how men can have up to four wives but women can't it's like I, or I in the Islamic school I want to say the, the azan the call to prayer all the boys in my class they're like we're gonna do the call to prayer for fr this Friday um, I'm ineligible because I'm a woman apparently can't do the azan, I can't do the call to prayer. So just those, are, I would say, are my Quran-specific examples. And they're like, well, this is to protect women. I don't see that at all. Yeah, so there's a lot of different points that you brought up. The first one being the hijab, which the woman is obligated to wear. And you talked about how the men have to lower their gaze, which is 100% right. The women also have to lower their gaze, and the men actually have their own hijab. So the men have their own parts of their body that needs to be covered as well. So obviously, men and women were created um, both physically different and psychologically, all different types of, they're different in every single way. There's different parts of the body that need to be covered because men are attracted to different things, women are attracted to different things, and it's to protect both sides. The second thing that you brought up, I believe you mentioned the you not being able to make the call to prayer. Um, once again, that's in order to protect the women just because men can also be attracted to the voice of women. So that's the reason that that's not allowed. And I completely understand that you being a young child, that's something that you wanted to do. I mean, pre-puberty, um, in your household, when, with, your, with your family, that's something that you should feel free to practice, make the call to prayer, do that in front of your father, your brothers, your uncles, it doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be in front of the whole entire mosque. So there may be things that you felt because you were a woman you were being limited to, but there's a benefit behind it. So it's about looking into that. I think this is bringing up an important important point of contention here with all the things that you're saying and you keep bringing up that men and women are fundamentally different. Where is that coming from? Can Where is what that? coming from? When you say those things. When I say what? Men and women are fundamentally different in these very specific ways. Men are attracted <laughs> to a woman's voice. Okay, so scientifically, uh, men and women are different. So if you were just I look at someone, man, and I look at a woman, I'm pretty sure I would see some differences. Um, as well as just scientifically, biologically, emotionally, psychologically, there's been studies because everyone started to question you being able to change your sex and be able to change your gender. But you were created as a certain sex for a reason. And each- I would, so that's my point <clears throat> of contention here. I, there's nothing. There's nothing for me there. When you say that I was created for a specific purpose and a woman was created for a specific purpose, I would disagree completely. Why can't I fulfill those other purposes? When you start slowly building upon these layers, these layers of like roles, that, that prescriptive. prescriptive roles, that starts to create a system of oppression. Allah actually says in the Quran that la yakra fiddin, like there's no compulsion in religion. So when you say that, why can't I do X, Y, Z? Like why can't I do the other role, for example, right? These are the things that because Allah expects you to, these are the things best for you, but it's not that you can't do these things. But when you say it's best for me, <laughs> There's a threat. The, the problem yeah. is there's always going to be an existential threat. Saying it's best for you because it's what's best for society. So everything that Allah Taala puts in place for us, that we believe God, the reason that we have these specific, if you want to say roles, because men complement women in a certain way and women complement men in a certain but, way. But what I'm saying is he's not, when let you me, say let me, that Let me though, explain myself, right? Let yeah, me give ahead, you a very ahead. easy way to understand that. I'll use her point, right? So you mentioned that, for example, why can you not marry four husbands and why can I marry four wives, right? These things have less to do with equality or worthiness in the eyes of Allah and just individual sex differences. For example, if I have four wives, right, I can impregnate all of them and we'll all know who the father is and who the mother is. If you, for example, in this scenario, you have four husbands, we won't actually know who the father is. And also, why, just why? why is that why? important? Why would that happen? And why how does why? that make men and women <laughs> equal in the eyes pause, of Allah? Like, that's what pause, that's pause. telling so you. So I'm saying we're equal, but we're different. Bro, what the? Listen, what's if, wrong if, with this Taha guy? What's up with this dude? I just, I just, I just want to ask, ask him, bro. <laughs> did she text you back? Because okay, all jokes aside, I think that and Rami, if you if you don't mind putting it back in the normal orientation, yeah. this is this is all because of a product of the modern day feminist lens where it's under this pretense that men and women have to be the same, they are equal. So any time that you have anything that contents or, or challenges that status quo, it's always going to seem something that seems oppressive or barbaric. So all of these people are under the, the notion of this liberal mindset, this postmodern mindset that men and women have to be equal in every single way possible. Now Allah says in the Quran that a man is not better than a woman and a woman is not better than a man except in terms of taqwa or piety or God consciousness. 
So we know that they hold the same value in the eyes of Allah, with all other variables being the same. But they do have differences, as Jad said, and these inherent differences in, I guess, genetics or in environment or just in roles, they help shape a better society. I think that's undisputed. I think anyone that challenges that, it's cold, bro. And like in regards to the Avan thing, or obviously that's just one example that um, she was using. Mm-hmm. Basically, like there's roles in our religion. There is roles for men and there's roles for women. The Mu'addin, the person who was giving the Adhan at the Masjid, that is a role for a man. Why is it a role for a man? Because the men are the the ones that are supposed to be praying at the Masjid. Now, what a lot of people don't know, women get the same reward um, that the men get by going to the Masjid and all that ever that they have to do to go to the Masjid and to get that reward. The women get the exact same reward that the men get by go, that they get of going to the Masjid by praying at home. Now, mm-hmm. I want us to imagine if the tables were switched here, right? Let's imagine that the men they would get the same reward as the woman. The woman had to go to the masjid, but the men, if they stayed home, they would get the same reward. Imagine how much everyone would be like, oh my God, that's so unfair towards the towards the um, the woman. But no, the woman get to stay at home and they get to reap the rewards that the man has to go to yeah. the masjid to get. So why don't we bring that up? You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's very, it's just very selective. It's not, it's not a good point. Um, and I wouldn't, yeah. if it were, obviously when you look at it in hindsight, there's obviously things that you would say differently. I don't think I would use the, because I had never even thought about the, like a woman having to like, or wanting to, to give the event. Um, that's why I brought up the, like the attraction. Obviously that's still a thing, but that's not like the yeah. primary, the primary reason. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, there's a lot, there's a lot of practicality in it too, Jed. Like imagine a woman's pregnant, bro. She has to go to the masjid at 4am for Fajr Adhan. Like that's impractical. A woman can't pray for a quarter of the month i.e. a quarter of her life, most of it, right? So for her to go to the masjid and be expected to do that, I don't think it's fair. I think it's it's oppressive, if anything. It's it's pushing her beyond what is easy and reasonable for her because Allah has revealed Islam to not make our lives harder but easier. So it would kind of be <clears throat> hypothetical to expect women to fulfill roles that are a little bit outside what they deem reasonable. Now, whether you can or can't is not the main contention of this point. It's should we or should we not from a societal point of view? And yeah. like something I want to address in the comments, obviously you're not seeing it right now, but you notice everyone, you're going to notice it a lot in this video that when I'm speaking with, what's her name, Janet? Or, Janet, yeah. When I'm speaking to Janet, um, obviously I'm not looking directly at her, um, obviously because I'm trying, to, I'm trying to lower my gaze. So if you look at the comment section of the video already, it's like, oh my God, he can't even look at these people in the eyes when he wants to talk to them. No, I actually say it in the video that it's a part of what we have to do is to lower our gaze. And um, that's and if you look, notice that when I'm talking to the men um, in the video, then I actually look them in their eye and have a conversation. But when it comes to speaking with, with women, I'm always, obviously, we're supposed to lower our gaze. So I want to yeah. make sure that people understand the reason for that, not because I'm scared to, to look at someone in their eyes. I'm never scared. I'm, I, have the, I have the truth by my side, so I have nothing to be scared of. And sisters, he's single too. But before we go back into it, I want to give a quick, quick disclaimer right here for everyone watching, the brothers and sisters, that we had a decent experience with Jubilee. We're not here to kind of talk bad on them or anything, but understand Jubilee has rights to their content. They are their own creators and platform. So they are not going to air everything that we had, right? So Jad, me and you, we were there for like three, four hours for the whole recording, but they trimmed it down and cut it down into what, like 40 minutes? So there's a lot that I said and Jad said and a lot of responses that we had and a lot of rebuttals that they completely omitted from that. So inshallah, this video will serve as uh, a means of answering these questions because a lot of the times these separate external media, they have their own agenda. Now, we're not saying Jubilee has their own agenda because, again, the whole point of this is middle ground. So all we could do is trust that they will show both sides. But there were a lot of things, unfortunately, that they cut out. So that's what we want to talk about today. Yeah. And something else, because obviously, alhamdulillah, this was my second time and um, definitely my last. Um, So there was a couple of differences in terms of just the experience overall. With the first one, um, the director, I won't say her name, but she was actually the director for both. But in the first one, she was the only one and she was the one directing us and everything. And in the second one, she had an assistant who did all the talking and she actually didn't say anything this whole entire time. Now, the first in the first video that I was in, they, allow, they allowed us to speak freely. Um, she barely intervened. She would always say, like, please let this person speak because they haven't said anything or something like that. But it was barely like 
she was actually letting us have like a like a conversation. If you notice in this video compared to the last one, there was a lot more interruptions in this video. Um, there's a lot more just commotion. It seems a lot more argumentative um, than the than the first video that I was in. Now the reason that being and Fayad can um, agree to this or like confirm this, she one of the workers at Jubilee literally came up to both sides and told us that. The second you disagree with something, I need you guys to jump on it and don't let them finish. Like, I need you guys to interrupt them. So when they walked up to us and told us that, I'm like, I'm like, how are we going to have a productive conversation if the second that I'm not letting them get their thoughts across, I need to hear what they have to say. And this way that when I speak, they're giving me the respect so that they can hear what I have to say. That's mm -hmm. why when you notice, if you if, when you're watching the video, every time they're speaking, me and Fayyad and the other people – we're, we're listening to them and you'll I, only one time. And that's the part, of course, that they put as the introduction to the video. But one time that I actually get frustrated and I cut them off. But that was just one time in the entire video. If you look at them when they're speaking, the whole entire time we're being respectful. And we're listening to what they have to say. But the second I speak, they all jump in and they all interrupt. And they don't let me, They like half the time, more than half the time, I wasn't even able to get my complete thought out. So it was just really frustrating in the fact that it was being... They were being told, both sides were being told to do that. We just didn't interrupt them while they were speaking because that's just not our nature. I'm not, yeah. it's just not, not natural for, to me to, to interrupt someone while they're mid sentence. So, yeah. Just, yeah. And I, I think it, it really goes to show that Jubilee is not always a place to have enlightening discussions and to show different perspectives on a certain topic. It's mainly an entertainment channel. That's why people watch it because it's entertaining and, and whatever. Um, but, You'll see a lot of the time when it comes to arguments against Islam, whether it's people in the video or people in the comments, they're always shallow arguments just veiled with some liberal mindset. Like, why can't I call the Adhan? Why do you need to call the Adhan? Why is it, why is it calling the Adhan something that's so important to you? Or are you, just, like, are you just picking that because you know it's something you're not allowed to do? Like, as a man, I can't sit on my bum all day and be cared for by my wife. Does that mean I should go and cry about it all of a sudden? Like, why is you in this liberal society are actually forced to go out and work. Do you complain and cry about that? Or do you pretend mm -hmm. you're liberated because you're taught that it's something that's liberated? And that Taha guy, like this goes to show how incredulous these people are. What do you mean men and women are not exactly the same in every single way, biologically, psychologically, and otherwise? It's like, bro, she can get pregnant, I can't. Like it's so clear. If they are not even willing to accept that fundamental premise, you can't have a discussion mm -hmm. with these people. Exactly. And that's why it's you see so, these things. Like, yeah. no, yeah. you see these things. no, no worries, bro. No worries. That's why you see these things coming to like. Um, imagine you're a woman doing the then, and once a week or once a month for a week, you just can't do it. Five prayers a day for like five days straight. Twenty five prayers that you can't do the then for just because you're on your period. Like, mm. listen, and let's 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 take it a step further. These things are so practical. They're so practical. Yeah. A man is out all day working and whatever. So the fa very fact that he's already outside of the house makes him more eligible to do the Adhan, having to go uh, to, to do the Adhan. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's, there are so many ways you can look at it to, to understand the practicality behind it. But at the very, like on the most fundamental level, even if it was just because women should stay home and men should be the ones to go out and work and blah, blah, whatever. So what? Why is that? Why do you have a problem with this? All you're saying is I live a liberal life. This is not a liberal life and you're crying about it. Like we have our tradition. You have your tradition. You don't see me crying about your tradition. So what gives you the right to interrogate yeah. me about mine? Interrogate us about our tradition. And I wanted to add in that. That was a beautiful point, bro. It, it reminds me of this point that the Nikabi sister on our team, her name is Harmony. She brought up this point that it's not about... Why can't we do these things? But you got to question, why do you have an issue with that? Why are you asking that question in the first place? It's because we live in a society that kind of breeds this, this almost this androgynous state between men and women. So before we jump back into this, I, I do want to quickly note this on polygyny because a lot of, you know, we, we're assuming, we can't just assume Muslims are watching this. Do you get what I mean? So there's a lot of non-Muslims that are watching this and they're kind of like, why can't a man marry, you know, four women and why can't a woman not? Number one, I want you to understand that polygyny is not something that Islam started. Polygyny is something that has always been there. 
men have always had multiple partners and perhaps women also did. Islam is actually the first religion to come down and limit it to four wives. So let's get that clear. There is no limitation to a number of wives until Islam came. And this is for obvious reasons. You know, more men die in war, more men die, uh, die in battle, more men even today work dangerous jobs. There's infant mortality is higher in little boys than little girls. Across the board, look at the U.S. population of men and women. There's always going to be more men than women. And Allah has made it permissible, if you can take care of them and be responsible for them and take accountability for them, that you can marry them. However, if a woman has multiple partners, because I know all the sisters are going to wonder, like, why can I not have four husbands? Number one, it's not practical. If you have four husbands, you want to marry uh, four men. You want to have kids with all of them. Nine months each. Bro, you're going to be spending, like, most of your life just struggling. Let's get that clear, number one. Number two, we don't know who the father is, right? Studies have shown today that one of the biggest determinants in childhood delinquency, success in school, drug use, alcohol use, uh, mental health, it's knowing who your father and mother are. It's that lineage. It's assurance of that. So if one man gets four women pregnant, we all know who the father is, that one man, and we all know who the mother is. But if roles were reversed, we don't know. Do you get what I mean? So Islam is a complete way of life. It's not just a religion. It's not just an ideology. So that's why Allah has thought, thought about all the different aspects of how we would live our life. And he makes no mistakes. Yeah. Yeah, that's an amazing point. And just to just to piggyback off of that, Islam, as you mentioned, is a full system. Anytime you take anything in isolation, it's going to seem stupid. Like imagine I took a car with just two wheels in a trunk. You're going to be like, what the heck is the point of that? Two wheels in a Like what are you going to do with that thing? It's not until you have a full car that you understand the use of the wheels, the steering wheel, the engine, the trunk, the seats, all of that. The seatbelt even, something as small as that. Imagine I had two wheels and a seatbelt. You're like, yo, what am I going to do with this? Islam is a full system. So you can't just look at the fact that a man can marry up to four women and a woman cannot marry more than one man and think, oh, wow, we're so oppressed. You know, how could God do this to us? Think about the fact that a man has to take care of a woman. Can you imagine one woman being taken care of by four guys while there are other women who are still looking to get married? Can you imagine one woman impregnated by one of her three husbands one else having to wait and she only wants two kids so then one guy if he's really lucky gets two kids and two guys if they're somewhat lucky get one each like it, it in every single way you look at it it does not make sense and it's again just another point of you wanting to cry about it like why is this something you're so against many societies in the past were polygynous we are one of the few that are not and this comes from greco-roman uh not greco-roman pardon me um uh, uh judeo-christian value this comes from Christian value. So you're basically just comparing one religion to another. Hmm. They're not your beliefs. You were taught this growing up. Hmm. So, Habibi, that was amazing. And before we jump into it, do either of you uh, want to talk about hijab? I know that, Jad, you spoke a lot about hijab in the video, but they didn't really put all of it in. <laughs> um, this whole no, notion I mean, that like hijab is yeah. oppressive to women, like where do they get this from? 100%. I mean, this is something that I even addressed, obviously, I addressed in the first video. And I think obviously now uh, people are starting to understand more that hijab isn't really oppressive to women. It's to protect our women. It's to um, to make sure that everyone, obviously both men and women, are are being modest. And just like I think Harmony said that she was saying like I want it, but what she said basically what she meant is like this is the reason that hijab is for all women so that you're seeing the woman's intellect and you're seeing them for who they are as a person rather than seeing them as an object, right? So that's the reason for the hijab. The hijab is put in place for us to see a woman for, for her mind and for her intellect and for who she is as a person rather than seeing her as just who she is as physically. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's obviously one of the many reasons that the hijab for a woman is what it is. Yeah. And even Janet will go back in the video later on. She'll, she'll bring it up again in regards to why She's like, why don't men wear a headscarf? She'll bring it up later on in another topic or something. It's like, bro, yeah. we just explained to you that men have a different hijab than women. How are we going to have the same hijab before two completely different people, like two completely yeah. different bodies, two completely different everything? Mm -hmm. How are you expect the same exact thing to be applied to both of us? It just doesn't make right. sense. And they'll, they'll always put it on men and women. Like the last one was do good, should good Muslim women wear the hijab. I think Jubilee titled that. This yeah. one, when we did the casting and we applied for the audition, it was Muslims versus ex-Muslims. You look at the video this morning, bro. The title says, uh, are men and women equal? 
in Islam or something like that. It wasn't even that. It wasn't even like one of the bigger topics. It was like, yeah, I was like, what, bro? And and they they all seem to think like Islam will force you to wear hijab. First of all, Allah says there's no compulsion in Deen. And when you look at hijab, there's never been a single mention of like hudud, like uh, worldly punishment for hijab. You won't find that. A woman disobeying the commandments to wear hijab is disobeying Allah. But there's no like dunya punishment for it. Sure, countries have different laws. That's fine. I agree with that. But there's no Islamically prescribed Sharia punishment for not wearing hijab. You not wearing hijab is the equivalent of, let's say, for example, you lying, right? So you're sinning and transgressing against yourself and you're sinning in the eyes of Allah. But there's no force. There's no compulsion. You can wear what you want. But I would even argue like, why should a woman be so oppressed and subjected and subdued to the point where she has to walk around as a sex object. Like, why is that always? That's what I was saying. Like, how do you yeah. how do you call it oppressive that a woman is wearing hijab and she's protecting her modesty? I find it oppressive that you guys are using these women to push all these advertising and this marketing. That's what I find oppressive. I find it oppressive that you're using these women to push out your products and you're putting their bodies out there and you're minimizing them down to just their bodies. That's what I find oppressive. Like, how yeah. do you call like? How do you not find that the woman like protecting them and and protecting their modesty? How is that oppressive in comparison to using these women just for their bodies? Which one is more oppressive? Mm. Yeah, on one hundred percent. At the same time, they'll they'll promote OF uh, as if it's something that's liberating and you know get your bag and whatever. And like, let me ask the sisters who agree with Janet and, and Taha and these these liberal people. Let me ask you one question: Why don't you like why? Are you okay with there being a prohibition on you walking out naked? Like, why are you okay with people stopping you from walking out naked or close to it in the streets and the malls and the schools and whatever? Are, why are you okay with that? It's because you grew up in a society where it's not normal to do that. And they have a specific standard on what you should and shouldn't cover. And people, as human beings, have different standards. There will be women who look at other women and be like, damn, she's wearing a freaking skimpy outfit. I don't know how she's wearing that. I would never. So even in your society, it fluctuates between people. So how come when we have a standard that's above all of yours, because let's be frank, the West is incredibly immodest. Look at like the beaches like 60 years ago, women were fully covered there. Were they oppressed mm -hmm. or were they happy to be at the beach? You know? I'm not actually saying go look at it, but if you're a sister, then go look at it. There's no problem. And don't, you know, just take my word for it, inshallah. And don't inshallah, ask yeah. know. But regardless, like it's just a different standard again. And again, mm -hmm. you can look at the practicality. A hijab will preserve modesty between men and women because for a man, the most important thing is how attractive the woman is, especially in the initial stages. So if he sees less beauty, He'll be less attracted. And I'm not saying that he'll be enticed to go and like harass a woman. I mean, he'll be less enticed to go and flirt with her, encourage her to do zina with him and all the mess that comes about afterwards. This preserves marriages as well because she's more covered. This is less likely to happen. There are so many like uh, wisdoms behind it that you can extract. If you think about it without any subjective bias for just like five seconds, you can extract these with no problem. But obviously you just want to take these points that have been perpetuated by the West time and time again to yell and cry against Islam. And it's, it's, at this point, honestly, it's pathetic. Yeah. Let's, let's go on to the... To, yeah. Let's go to the next topic. Introducing women to the sole purpose of, of reproduction. And... I don't think it's that. Men, you know, you can impregnate someone every day. And women, you know, we kind of have to stay pregnant for a while and... I feel like there would be like a mix up with paternity I understand issues. what you're saying. Like yeah, genetics, like, like if it was just one one man impregnating <clears throat> a bunch of women, you could have a society still. I understand so what me, you're saying, but these are mm. such narrow, like what about isms? These are such yeah. narrow circles. So let me let me ask you a question. No, but yeah. I want to I'm sorry, in. I want to hear from Atia and Janet as well. Yeah. I think um also <laughs> here's just a it's just so like, I, I can guess the answer. It's so frustrating. It's like let us talk, bro. If yeah. they have something, if they have something of value to say, let them come up and say it themselves. Yeah. Why are you forcing them to say it? But I'm yeah, it. It. <laughs> yeah I, I mean, it's funny. As soon as, like, they say you can disagree, and mm. then as soon as you disagree, they cut you off and let the other yeah. people. Like, it's so pathetic. Well, look, bro. Why don't y'all wear a hijab? Like, why, why, why can't men wear a hijab? We just explained yeah. it to you. Know what I'm saying that's what I'm saying. We, we just explained it to you. That's why I'm laughing. So you can look at me and literally laugh. A hijab, a headscarf. That's not what a hijab is. Yeah. I, okay. I mean, so, and once again, we already said that the hijab for men and women is. Dead. I'm sorry. I don't want to be that guy. Do you look at how like dumb she felt in that moment? 
<laughs> like I'm not I'm not trying to be rude to her, but yeah. like my point is they are so incredulous that they know when they get caught, they don't care. They just want to keep like pestering us about mm. Islam. Different because we're both created physically different. So obviously the hijab for both of them is going to be that different. That statement is not really And then once again, you're implying that the hijab is oppressive to women. So that's what you're implying when you're saying that why can't men do it? Because are you? do you believe yeah, that the hijab is oppressive out. to women? Uh, but, uh, in the deepest depths of my soul, yes, I understand okay. it can so be a choice. I do you, believe it's oppressive. By you agreeing that, or by you saying that the hijab is oppressive to women, that's actually disrespectful to our women in the religion. Because you're either implying that these women can't think for themselves and that they're just wearing this hijab because they're that's they not what no I mean at all. Like, no, I think or you're saying that we're all forcing every single woman in the religion to wear this and we're throwing this on their head. No, I, 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 I think we need to acknowledge how that's what you're saying. That's what you're saying. By saying that the women are being oppressed in the religion, that's because they have to wear the hijab. That's not black and white. Can I jump in here and ask? So these justifications that we are seeing for hijab, do these justifications really still have solid ground when we consider that the hijab was for only one class of women, free women. Slave women didn't wear hijab, and because men were allowed to have sex with, uh, with slave women, they were being sexualized and objectified when Muslim men were considering whether they're going to purchase them. Yeah, let me answer that. So, to address your slavery point, I'll get on that in a sec, all right? But the point that you're asking, if we were really equal, how could that be? And you were asking if we all had hijab, why do you have to cover your head with a khimar and I don't, right? A very simple example is, if I expect a man and a woman to lift a heavy load, but the same load, that would be unequal, right? So, we have to look at it as a equality or equity so what is equal in the eyes of Allah for a man is not going to be the same treatment for a woman and I'm sure we understand that if there are differences in our sex then there has to be difference in expectations and roles maybe historically but we live in a time where a lot of what you're saying just isn't relevant so you know, I'm not going to be found in a situation thank you um I would love to oh wrap this God, up and nice. I would love it if the women would wrap it up okay I'm what Pause. paused you that's so discriminatory bro see, and like in the in the previous video it was not done like this like we like Okay, maybe she'd be like, can you please like make sure you say something before this thing ends because you haven't said anything. But it was never like that blatant where it's like, it's like, yo, we need like the woman to end this. Like, like bro, come mm. on. Like, it's just so frustrating. Yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to add a point to that. <sighs> and this is just something that I'm going to throw y'all. Not right now, but when the, that brother that's fully covered probably in more correct hijab than anyone here. Um, when he goes on to say something, I have something to say because I've been in contact with the brother since then and uh, there's there's some good news, inshallah, that I want to throw in there in a bit. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. That's, that's great to hear. And um, yeah, I'm so, well, what? let's let the women finish. Listen, you want to talk about how women are oppressed and you need to come stand up for them? Men, men. Stop your 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 male privilege. Let the women like. Why do you need to come in and save them if we're so equal? Why can't they just come and jump in and save themselves? And it's so clear there's an agenda. Guys, let the women finish. Shut up. <laughs> I'm gonna finish my point. Like, why do you have a problem with that? These people are so incredulous. It's crazy. Yeah. Frustrating. Yeah. But um, you'll see more as you continue to watch yeah, the video. Yeah. Like, and you'll notice more, by the way, more interruptions, more people, more of um. Mm -hmm. You'll, I'll point it out when it comes up. Inshallah. You'll also notice that they they didn't even let Fahd address like the whole slavery thing. They let him just slip it in. And then... No, they no, no. Here's the like... thing. Here's the thing. So I'm not going to post screenshots, obviously, for sake of just adab, common decency and respect. But I've... You know, when the video came out today, that brother, the one named Kafir, for anonymous purposes, the one that was fully, fully covered, that ex-Muslim, I got a message from him in the morning. And he was like, bro, did you see that part where you addressed the slavery thing and they didn't even put your response. Like they completely edited that part out. He himself messaged me today, this morning on Discord, asking me if I saw that. Like, wallahi, wow. that blew my He's, mind. Like, he was, by the way, like he was, he actually was the, like, and he was the only one using like kind of at least a little bit of like logical arguments. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, he, yeah. And he we, understood we, at we least what he was saying. He wasn't just like saying stuff just to say stuff. He yeah, genuinely just didn't understand certain things. And he just wanted to get them addressed, which is 100% okay. Yeah. Like, but the other people, they're not, they don't actually care to learn or anything like that or care to, they're just saying stuff to say stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, subhanAllah, like, and he, he's a very genuine guy, you know. So, after the, the whole podcast went down, I actually spoke to him after. And I spoke to him one-on-one -on -one just for a little bit. We exchanged, you know, contact information. And I told him that, you know, I'd love to talk to you more and, or even possibly host you on the channel and we can talk about some of the things that we didn't get to talk about because we didn't get that time to discuss all the slavery points and stuff like that. And for many of the viewers watching, like 
there are there is a big demographic of people that dedicate their entire livelihood to having channels that purport misinformation about Islam, unfortunately. And that's why we're making these videos to clear these misconceptions at the end of the day. Because if they have these misconceptions, they get paid, they get more people to hate Islam and fear mongering and all this. And at the end of the day, it's not just because we do firmly believe that Islam is the truth. So it deserves for us to give it that limelight to at least share real Islam with you guys. 100%. Inshallah, you guys want to get back to it? Let's go. Rooted in when it comes to covering up, for example. On the screen. To you. And if you are dressed immodestly, they might react a certain way. They're attracted to your voice. I just have to say, I am a lesbian, and I am not tempted by like in my mind. I don't see a woman walking down the street immodestly, and it's not rooted in. Rami, you want to put it on the screen? Type. Allah sees. Is it not on the screen? I see it on the no. screen. Are you seeing it on the screen? Oh, there. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Okay, perfect. Both when men and women is equal, and I don't hear that honestly at all. When you're saying, things you're saying, saying okay, thank you. I have lost relationships because. <laughs> Bro, you say they all jump on me. Famous. I'm about to say one thing, and they all say, "No, no, no, shut up." <laughs> <laughs> the relationships that I've lost would be relationships that I probably shouldn't have been in in the first place. Once I became more strong in my faith, I had to cut those people off. So those are only relationships that I've lost. Yes, it hurt. Maybe at the time, but I look at it from the outside perspective. That was the decision that I had to make. A relationship that I've lost is in a different sense than losing contact with them, but I, the relationship I lost with them is that I'm unable to be my true self around them. And that relationship is with my mother, and it's the reason why I'm in this ridiculous outfit today. Because if my mother ever found out that her only child is going to go to hell forever because he left Islam, it's going to hurt her so badly. I saw myself how much it hurt my mom when I was talking openly about my uh, doubts in Islam in high school, it was causing her like literal depression. The reason I continue to pretend and I, like, I don't really have the bravery to come out and be my true self around her is because she's the best mom I could have ever asked for. She did, she worked so hard to raise me. She sacrificed so much to give me a really happy childhood. And the idea that I will be showing her that all her hard work was for nothing because her child is gonna burn in hell forever. I can't hurt her like that again, like I hurt her in the past. She doesn't deserve to be hurt. She deserves to be happy. I would say I haven't lost any relationships as far as like dating. And I am no contact with my family, but it's actually not because of the difference in religion. It's because of a plethora of other things. Um, I would say I went to that Islamic academy growing up. And ironically, it was the best years of my life. I had the best friends. When I went to a secular school, I'm from a conservative area. So I was the only Iranian. So they were bullying me for being hairy. And then when I went to the Islamic academy, I didn't have that problem anymore. It wasn't until when I went to high school and I'm distancing myself from Islam that a lot of people from our local community um, just kind of like there's whispers of, oh, Janet's family is a hypocrite. She's a whore because I don't dress modestly, as modestly as they'd like me to, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I've lost a lot of, I would say, my Muslim friends from the school. Islamic views on homosexuality are outdated. Buy this one. Here we go. <laughs> oh, get your popcorn, bro. All of them. So I grew up in a pretty queer family. My South Asian family is very uh, Muslim. Yeah, and stories my actually mother crazy, and by the way. her sister grew up in that environment. <laughs> um, and all three of them turned out to be queer. I'm queer. My sister's queer. It was a long journey. Well, was, of I don't know what they was in the water. That's, that, no, that's uh, literally called grooming, bro. Who we are and who we've always been. When I when I look at my grandfather, he and I have strikingly similar stories. He admits that in his village, it was normal for men before they were married to play around with each other, to have boyfriends, um, uh, to experiment. But then after you were an adult, after you kind of after you married, of course, that that was off the table. But I, I kind of see, you know, almost seventy years apart. Me and him both have the same stories. Early 20s, got to experiment with my sexuality, you know, now in a long-term relationship with a girl and, and very secure in that. But uh, his experience was filled with shame that, that he then passed on to his daughters. So uh, I just, I, I see that and I feel bad for generations of, of queer people who have been uh, told that they can't be um, or that maybe they can be, but they can't act upon it because that is haram in some way. Um, so queerness is in our blood, it's in our nature, it's across species, it's across time, it's across history, no. and uh, religion through Islam, through Christianity, um, and through various other means um, have been used as, as tools to erase that queer history. I agree. All Abraham, all religion in general, organized religion, I pause, feel like Rami, it's not, you're going to find it. I have, to, I have to expose this point right now. Um, 
I spoke to his brother after, obviously, after after the Jubilee, uh, you know, debate. So it was technically in public property outside. Um, and then I was speaking to him and I asked him, I was like, bro, you're not really an ex-Muslim, are you? Because you said your your dad was a Jew, so you're half Jew, yeah, half you, you, Christian. I was like, wondering, where is his Muslim background? He no, 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 listen, listen, I, 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 I literally asked him, I was like, you're not really Muslim, are you? He looked me dead in the eyes, wallahi, and he's like, no, I'm not. And he didn't finish right there. He said, I told them that I wasn't. But they gave me the role anyway. Bro, what the heck? I, 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 in the video, he doesn't say anything about like having Islamic beliefs prior. Like at no point does he ever talk about like being a Muslim. Yeah, ever. That's pathetic. Uh, that's actually yeah. insanely yeah. pathetic from Jubilee. Like, I, I guarantee during the interview, they asked for a story. He mentioned how queer he was and his family is. And I, I promise they accepted him just for that and probably a few other points. Yeah, I remember Jad even asked him, like, have you ever read the Quran? And he's like, no, I haven't. And Jad's like, bro, I recommend that you should. Like, yeah. you've so never is... read the Quran in your life. And yeah. you're given this role of an ex-Muslim. Like, it doesn't make sense, bro, to me. Yeah. But let's keep watching. Before we get back into it, let's let's just establish, what does ex-Muslim mean? It means they were a Muslim, meaning, presumably, they understand Islam. And for some intellectual, logical, rational reason, decided to leave it. That's what ex-Muslim should mean, or at least what people presuppose means when they say, uh, I'm an ex-Muslim, or when they hear someone say, I'm an ex-Muslim. Here we have a guy who's never been a Muslim in his life, has never read the Quran, who probably doesn't know the basic, fundamental six pillars of Iman, five pillars of Islam, uh, levels of Islam. And he's on here disagreeing and debating with Muslims as a fake ex-Muslim. Not that he did it himself or he wanted to or whatever, but Jubilee allowed such a person on their show knowing this according to his own testimony mm. like that that's right. extremely pathetic and again shows they have an agenda against them i actually hope jubilee goes down for this bro like this is actually disgusting and yeah, we'll keep watching bro it gets worse yeah well sorry one more thing uh, i want to mm -hmm. mention while i bring it up these like the, this guy i think just proved that it's not something you're born with it's not something that you just you know have biologically or whatever and that it is conditioning because the fame is like 70 years, you know, worth of generations of people from his grandfather down to his, you know, his, his father and down to him and whatever. There is a reason there's a, a family tree of, of queerness, which he never defined. What does that mean? Like that you're bisexual, like what does it mean queerness? But regardless, like it just shows that it's conditioning. He grew up in a certain society doing certain things and then passed it down, passed it down. And you did the same exact thing, which means inversely, if you lived in an Islamic society, where there wasn't these uh, discussing like, you know, uh, corn and all this uh, exploitation. Uh, I don't want to say the word to get it demonetized, but, you know, all, the, all these horrible types of uh, exploitations, uh, you would be less likely to uh, be attracted to the same sex. You would be more likely to be attracted to the opposite sex um, like you find in all of, you know, Islamic history. You don't have too many people who are eunuchs or who are attracted to the same sex mm -hmm. or anything like that. Facts. Absolutely, bro. All right, I'm pulling it up, inshallah. I think it's good for us to take small, like, intermissions yeah, where sure. no one's talking just to make sure we get everything, like, on track. Yeah, and the points that you mentioned, these are imp important contentions that a lot of people fail to see because I want you to understand anytime that you guys listen to something from mainstream media, and I will group this platform in with mainstream media, that there is a lot of censorship and there is a lot of bias, and they will purport the narrative that they want to purport it's not always going to be objectively unbiased it goes without saying so i don't know man like i feel like and the irony is it's called middle ground but we'll keep watching <laughs> not you're gonna find it in christianity and judaism um i i myself i'm a lesbian i didn't come out until i was older like an adult but a lot of that was rooted because i have such a devout muslim family it's like it's if i come out like my mind's going many places it's not just gonna be like a normal american family coming out like i have very abrasive Muslim dad, I don't really see my gayness coinciding with um, religion, like an organized religion. I think that Islam has no moral standing to say that two consenting queer adults can't be in love while allowing a man to have sexual relationships with his slave. Okay, I pause, pause. how that is okay, but... Yeah, let's, let's, let's talk about this, bro, because this is, this is something that a lot of people are spreading misinformation in the comment section of the Jubilee video about, you know, slaves and stuff like that. So let's, let's discuss this. So in Islam, I want you guys to understand that we don't have slavery in the sense of Western slavery. And Islam definitely did not create slavery. Slavery has always existed, historically speaking. Islam came, as a matter of fact, believe it or not, to actually end the slavery. The Western 
definition of slavery, which is taking free people, innocent people, and making them slaves, i.e. even when they're born into it by their parents who were slaves as well, they're born into slavery. So Islam came to actually end that version of slavery. What Islam does have are war captives. So in strategic wars, by the way, and we're not, we don't just, you know, attack innocent people, obviously. In these settings, when we win the war, there's going to be a bunch of men and women that are left over, right? leaving them free historically speaking other civilizations would just completely abolish them we're not going to do that so what we do instead is we give them the chance to continue to live but we take them in they eat from the same food that we eat from they're clothed by the same food that we're clothed from they live under the same roof as us bro <clears throat> they have so much rights to the point where they can even go to a sharia court and they can even I guess, demand to be set free if they don't like to be with us. And Allah even says in the Quran that that fee that they have to pay to basically be set free, we're encouraged to pay that for our slaves or, I guess, captives as well. So if you really think about it, this is the most just form of what happens after a war than any other solution that you have in society. Now, obviously, if you have a woman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just, he doesn't categorize this as zina or just you know, immoral intercourse. And obviously it has to be consensual too. I don't know why people uh, make the grape argument with consensual intimacy between a man and a woman that he has that he's taking care of. Because at the end of the day, I think it was Imam Shafi, rahimahullah, he mentioned that the punishment for you uh, graping your, you know, the female captive is going to be the same as adultery, as fornication outside. So... I really don't see where the issue with this is. Additionally, if we beat our slaves, which we shouldn't, or our war captives, we have to set them free. It's obligatory. So I, I really don't understand this, bro. And, but it's, it's thrown around this buzzword of like slaves and it makes Islam look bad. But when you really study it, you understand that it's not bad at all. It's the most just form of society. And a lot of people will also ask, why did Islam not abolish slavery completely? Well, just like Rami said, Islam is a perfect and succinct way of life. It's a complete way of life. It's a deen, right? So if slavery was abolished overnight, just imagine what would happen to civilization and society. You'd have, what, a million people plus, probably millions, just free overnight. No longer having food on the table. No longer having someone to look after them. Prostitution would be back to an all-time high. So it's not feasible for that. So instead, the Prophet, peace be upon him, and Allah came with Islam as a revealed religion 1400 years ago to kind of eradicate slavery and encourage us to free our slaves, not just abolish it completely. Yeah, 100%. That's an amazing point. And then that begs the question, what happens when there's another war and you have to do something with the people? You can't let them go. You can't just off them. Well, you're going to have to take them as war captives. So if it was abolished, it's basically saying we can't do anything with people after a war, but there are people. So doesn't make any sense there there needs to be action taken to prevent any kind of chaos or destruction of of of, of livelihood of property of, of human beings lives and i was about to jump on the uh the, the topic at hand here but i'll hold myself inshallah for when we get there but yeah that's an amazing point 100 like if you look at like the cross-atlantic slave trade by the way when slave when slavery was abolished you could read the, the history on this you had a bunch of people who with with no property no job no livelihood thrown into the street. They don't even have a house to go to. They used to live with their, their owner, which I'm not saying that this was good. This system was disgusting. They kidnapped people from a different continent and moved them over uh, out of pure racism, which was biblically backed, by the way. So, mm -hmm. like, it's, it's absolutely horrendous and disgusting. But when they were freed, they were uh, poor, basically, on the street. And a lot of them went back to their previous owners, you know, yeah. basically wanting to be taken back. And it's, it's horrendous and it's sad, but, you know, Islam would not allow such a thing. Islam, but even if they ended up being poor, Islam would still take care of them. The state would still take care of them. That's why we have zakat. That's why we have jizya. That's why we have systems in place to make sure that no one is oppressed or taken advantage of or, or suffers under our, our control. But Yeah, you know, and the jizya, the, jizya, the jizya itself too, bro, it's literally for male non-Muslim combatants that they don't have to fight our wars for us. And that will fight their wars and take care of them. Like, it's not even for non-combatants, bro. So I, I really don't. And me and Jad brought up all these points. And that's why I say, oh, Muslims, learn your religion and study your religion and, and give da'wah. Because at the end of the day, me and Jad have either, number one, said these points. Number two, didn't get to say these points because they cut us off. Or number three, didn't even put them in the actual video. And, you know, they cut out these parts. So unfortunately, we have to talk about it here. 
Yeah, unfortunately. But khair, inshallah, you know, alhamdulillah, we, we do what we must. And uh, you guys did a great job, alhamdulillah, from what I could see so far. One last point I want to mention is where, uh, all, all, all respect to this guy, I don't want to disrespect him based on what you said. He seems like a pretty fair person. Um, I, I don't think he's as credulous as the others, but why is he comparing homosexuality to having sex with a, a female uh, a servant or a female uh, a war prisoner? How are these two things yeah. comparable? He kept bringing if, it up. That was just yeah, the one topic I, he I, wanted I think, to keep bringing I think, his, I think his, I guess, I, ideology was more so if two people that are same sex cannot have intimacy consensually, then mm. why is it okay in Islam for a man to kind of be with his war captive, i.e. insinuating that it's non-consensual? But that's not even the case at all. So I don't understand I, that. I mean, if that and was his argument... Yeah, yeah, sorry, go on. I was going to say, if that was his argument, he should have been clear about that. But what he said specifically is Islam yeah. doesn't have the moral moral high ground. That's what he said. It doesn't have the moral capacity to prohibit this and allow yeah. that. But why? On what basis? What morality do you have? Where do you get the morality from? How can you prove that it's, it, it is the morality, objectively, or better or superior than Islam, whatever way? And I guess since we're on the topic... Um, it would be uh, if Allah allowed a man and his wife to have like sex, then that I see, would see a contradiction in, in, in some capacity. Because what do you, when you say homosexual, what are you talking about? You're talking about a man having sex with another man, uh, basically anal sex, essentially. That's basically what you're, you're, you're like celebrating here. And it's not even love because Islam doesn't say, you know, don't love another man or anything. It, the prohibitions on the actual act itself. So it's it's no longer, yeah. it's just love. It's not, if it was just love, you wouldn't need the sexual acts. If it was just love, yeah. it's not. It's actual sexual immorality. But Allah doesn't allow even a man and a woman to have a uh, act. So it's yeah. like, there's no comparison there for him. Let me, let me add this point, Rami. When you said that it's, it's the act, so it's it, it's not the inclination itself that's wrong. Now there's there's a difference in opinion on this, but the majority of scholars say that the inclinations, especially when they're uncontrollable, is not your fault. Because how are you going to be punished for something that's intrusive or something that is out of your circle of control? Just you thinking that you're gay. But the problem is the act that you mentioned, right? Yeah. In Islam, you need four male witnesses: adult, sane mind, reliable, trustworthy, sober, to basically testify that they saw you having this act with another man and spying is haram in islam so unless you were completely kind of out there in the open in just being careless just in a way where even a kid could just come by and watch you guys of course that's going to lead to the spiraling down and dysfunction of society and that's why the punishment is for that and even if a man and a woman were doing that there would be the same punishment so i don't understand what the problem with this is it's more so just we're trying to protect the fabric of society and decency I think you should watch this segment and then we'll see what happens. See what yeah, bro, because yeah. when, you, when you bring up the incest point and I bring up the monkeypox point, bro, like, this is crazy. I hate that they cut it off. Lesbian are over adults who are in a loving relationship. Fully consensual. There's no power dynamic. Is it's bad. My question is, if it's okay for two consenting, for example, males who have love for each other to conduct sexual intercourse, then what is the problem with um, two brothers who have love for each other and they're consenting? <laughs> that's the same. How is that's it not the incest same? And you're comparing incest and homosexuality. Oh. That's, that's you're, so Please, that's wait, wait, pause it, pause it, pause it. Wait, how long? Just keep, keep, I want you to just track, I don't know if you kept the whole thing in this, track how long it takes until like just notice how none of them actually say anything the first point they'll ever be able to bring will be brought up by the girl sitting next to me harmony she's the one that actually gives them an out and they all jump on it but before she says anything they all have no answer to this question just keep watching it Either way, explain the difference. It's very I could, relevant. I could one, one is incest. Morality. One is I've done a 23 and me, me and my girlfriend are not related at all. Okay. So one well, is, what is the that? difference? What is the difference? They're both Let's consenting and they both love each other. Can I say something? Can I say something? Yes. That's as wrong as a brother and a sister consenting uh, and yeah. having sex. Exactly. I agree. What's the problem with that? What do you mean? You're comparing incest with homosexuality. Okay, because they both come from the same point. There's two people who consent to having sex together. 
Yeah, it's the same exactly. exact yeah. thing. So what's different? Why is they love different methods of socialization. What is, the the pro- what is the problem with them? Have, if they both consenting and they both have love for each other, <laughs> just like two males who don't know Hold each on, other have love for each other, what is the problem? I just want to say, you just did this thing in public speaking. Do you notice? He has. He knows that I'm spitting. And he doesn't want me to keep talking. So he said, and he sees that another girl that has a more liberal mindset wants to speak. He said, let her please put the let let her speak right now. So <laughs> yeah. then, and he knows that she's on her side because she already disagreed with me earlier on this, right? Mm. So now she's gonna now she's gonna speak, and now it's literally me against the four of them and this girl. Like, it's just like <laughs> you're talking with a liberal Muslim. Yes, she, yeah. you know what I mean? you're gonna continue to notice that she. Like she disagreed with me probably more than she agreed with me for the, in, in the majority of this. Video. Yeah, she 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 what came else? at me and Jad more than she Hayat, yeah. she came at the other ones. Yeah, they they <laughs> handicapped you guys, bro, with her. That's pretty messed up. That's why one of the funniest comments I saw it on me was someone wrote, "Alhamdulillah, our brothers fired and Jad held it down in that two v six. Everyone <laughs> told me that. Everyone that I talked to that watched the video said literally it was a two v six. I was like. Yeah, Jubilee, yeah, you guys suck, to be honest. You guys suck. Speaking called minimizing an issue, and then you're trying to find this correlation right, that like, simply does not exist. What I'm addressing the principle, which is coming from objective morality. So I'm trying to figure out, what I'm trying to figure out is if this is wrong, if homosexuality is okay, then what makes incest not okay? Let me tell you something. Let me say, what you are bringing up is not relevant. It is not. You say he's not saying that. Tell me why it's not relevant. Tell me why it's not relevant. Yeah. That's all I'm asking you for. Tell me why it's not relevant. All he keeps saying is it's not relevant. It's not relevant. I mean, I'm telling you how it's relevant. Why can't you respond? Like, tell me why it's not relevant. And then you're going to see Harmony right now. She's going to bring up the power dynamic point, And then they're just going to eat that up because yeah. they finally found an out that they can use. But before she said that, like, they literally had no answer whatsoever. Even the power dynamic argument. I'll wait till she says it and then I'll talk. Oh, no, we're not going to do that. You're interrupting yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's really we're offensive all, for you to make an argument. Now we're constantly we're gonna, all, every time I speak, I'm getting interrupted. I let you it has How far back? And go back. No, like I go, I go. 30 seconds. Yeah, I went. All right. Socialization. Yeah, what, is the pro- what is the problem with them? Have, if they both consenting and they both have love for each other, <laughs> just like two males who don't know Hold each on, other have speak. love for each other, what is the problem? problem I just want to say, that? you just did this thing in public speaking called minimizing an issue, <laughs> and then you have to find this correlation <laughs> that like, simply does not exist. What I'm doing is not addressing the principle, which is coming from objective morality. So I'm trying to figure out. That's what I'm trying to figure out is if this is wrong, if homosexuality is okay, then what makes incest not okay? Let me tell you something. Let me say, what you are bringing up is not relevant. It is not. It has nothing to do with the question. Answer the question. Answer the question. Who are not related? Has everything to do. They're not on the same. What's wrong with two brothers? Can I answer the question? Yeah, okay, so I feel like it's very obvious that incest is wrong because one, if you have a child with this person, there might be something wrong with it. Not to mention that if somebody has known you since you were born, the influence that they'll have over your life is different than if you made the choice to actually right. be with them. Exactly. That's why it's wrong. Here's the thing about homosexuality, because you would think that I'm homophobic because, you know, like, I guess everybody assumes I'm like extra pious and whatever right, because right, I cover right. my face, right? Actually, one of my parents um, is a member of the LGBT community. I grew up with some cousins that were, I had friends that were all throughout elementary school and high school and stuff. I never saw, um, morally something wrong with it. I think that the reason that it was put into Quran it is simply about sustainability. You can't sustain life on earth if people, like the majority of the population are no, homosexual. No, 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 no. I don't think it would Father. say that anybody's better than anybody this, else. She's a revert. We all the have the, the capacity for love. We all just want to love and be loved. Let me pause. She's a revert at the end of the day with all due respect, with all due respect but at the end of the day, we can't just make reasons up you know, according to our whims and desires and why Allah has the wisdom that he has portrayed to us. So you can't say it's because of a continuation of species. So if, you know, gayness was rampant, then, you know, men and women would not have intimacy. We would not have kids and then the generations and populations would not increase. Says who? Sure, you could say that's probably your hypothesis, but you can't just say that at the end of the day. There's far more things happening in the unseen, bro, in the spiritual that we're not even aware of, that we can't even comprehend. There's a lot of things that if even if Allah revealed them to us, we would not comprehend them at all so let's not limit ourselves to one-dimensional thinking that's all i have to say and, and rami yeah. this is what i was talking about in terms of when they hear something that doesn't really necessarily go against them notice yeah. how when i was speaking you could barely hear me get a word out but when she yeah. starts speaking everyone is quiet right yeah 
It's pathetic. It's like because like they, they they can always interrogate, but they cannot be interrogated. And even what she said, like, um, if she mentioned a point about if you if you grew up with someone, they're gonna have a lot more influence. That, that doesn't you one that doesn't make any sense because like, uh, so what if you grew up with someone? Like, does that mean so that you can have a you can have a so if you met a girl in um, elementary school that you that you liked and you want to marry her yeah. later on in life, you can't exactly. marry her because you knew her in elementary school. Exactly. Oh, and and wouldn't you would you not have equal influence over each other because you've known each other for the same amount of time or your whole life? Like it, do, it literally doesn't make any sense. There's a power anyway, dynamic in every relationship. Like there's a yeah. spirit, like someone exactly. bigger than someone else. Yeah, like find, 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 like, find two men in a relationship. There, one is like the dom, one is the sub. That's literally just human nature. Every relationship. Every relationship is going to have that. Yeah, 100 percent. And like what if you have like two people who are biologically related, brother and brother, who just uh, didn't know each other. And then finally, the wait, wait, play it, play it, play it, video. Oh, play the video. Yeah, let's do it. It brings up that point, bro. Let me play it. And, oh my, my god, question you're gonna have to... is the is it... idea that there's two consenting oh individuals god. that want to have sexual intercourse, regardless of their backgrounds. What is wrong with that? Because we don't, we're not saying that that's the only determiner here. We're saying between two men who have not grown up together, who are not brother or brother and brother. So th it's two different things. They are two different. Okay, things. so let's say there's two estranged brothers that never grew up together. My well, honest. Sorry, so can we pause? I would like to hear uh, oh Jack. You can make a final statement. I'd like to hear from Etia. Oh um, and can pause we? Oh pause it. my pause god. Bro, well, that is no, no, no. Promise, that is promise, actually promise. pathetic. Listen, wallahi, and Fayad is my witness, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is my witness. That wallahi, <laughs> after this point. When I said when I said that point, the two estranged brothers, if there's two estranged brothers that and they meet and they want to have sexual intercourse, is that okay? He said he said yes. Law has said yes, and they cut it out. Really? Yes, he yeah. agreed. He said he said yes. There's nothing wrong with that in my opinion, but they didn't put it in. Go back, just rewind. Yeah. And look at him say. Look at him say. He says honestly. Right after he says that, honestly, that's the only determiner here. We're saying right between two says, men honestly, who have says, not grown up together, no, who are not brother, or brother and brother. So th it's two different things. They are two different. Okay, things. so let's say there's two estranged right now, brothers that never grew up honestly. together. My well, honest answer. Can we pause? Okay. I would like to hear uh, Jack. You can make a... He said my honest answer to you, and he goes like, I don't have a problem with it. That's what he said. Yeah, there. Uh, I mean, I listen, it. I told Fayed right after. There's no way they include that in the video because it will completely obliterate them. They oh my god! Can't put that in the video. That's pathetic. And you know, the worst part is they could have all just said, yeah, there's no problem with it. Well, mm. like, what do you say after? Like, okay, you're so morally and and, and 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 psychologically regressed that you think that's okay. Wow, you guys are really weird. Like, that's like, the, we can't go farther than more. that. Yeah, yeah, even, so, it would have been, it been more beneficial to them. It would have been more yeah. beneficial to them to just say that it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm. they were disgusting, man. Honestly, this the Jubilee, like you guys are filthy. Uh, like honestly, the way, or maybe not as a whole organization, but whoever conducted this clearly has an agenda, and and whoever edited it as well. And I think that that is disingenuous. It's disgusting. Alhamdulillah, I'm glad that you know uh, I have the honor of being with the brothers here. Alhamdulillah, so they can clear it up to everyone. Yeah, Jubilee, do better. Final statement. I'd like to hear from Atia. Um, and can we keep it about homosexuality? So let's close up incest. You wanted to bring up the point about how incest you, can you not have homosexual thing, incest? Obviously, I'm sorry. Pause it, please, 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 please. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was the, probably the most moronic thing I, I've ever heard. And this, this woman is lucky she's behind a camera. She's lucky she's behind a camera. We don't. We can't see who she is, so she doesn't have embarrassment of going out in public after saying something so uh, uh, hideously ignorant. You cannot have homosexual incest. Is that impossible? A man and a man who happen to be brothers? That's, that's not a logical possibility all of a sudden. It hasn't been done before. It's a new thing that we invented after this recording that you guys did. This is actually so pathetically disingenuous. I wish she would have brought herself and pulled up a bench and sat because she wanted to talk so much. Like, it's actually pathetic. And and it's just like, can we not make it about incest? That's what the, the end of the day, the argument isn't about incest. It's not about homosexuality. It's a, mm. about objective morality and what is determining what is okay and what's not. And they didn't want to address that. They didn't want to address that. I asked them, I, you saw me as I asked a thousand times, why is it not okay? And before uh, Harmony put the idea of the power dynamic into their head, there was no answer. There was no, they, he couldn't tell me why it's not relevant. All he could say is it's not relevant. It's not relevant. It's not relevant. When I'm proving to him why it's relevant. Mm. Yeah. 
that has been proven to come from homosexual intercourse and a man having what's, intercourse what's with another harm? man. Um, all the STDs, STDs yeah, of course, are 100%. rampant in heterosexual the STDs, 100%, relationships. But there's, it's been scientifically proven that STDs are more yeah. in homosexual relationships. But heterosexual people get STDs too. So your argument of homosexual people get more STDs, but homosexual people are getting it higher than creating. There's new STDs that are resulting from this type of intercourse that's happening, and it's found a lot more. Give me an example of Yeah, very recent. Why is Atia like? Why is she go? You're on my side. Why are you arguing with me? Listen, listen, listen. They homosexual people get more STDs. Do. But homosexual people are that's getting why it's wrong? Than... So There's new STDs that are resulting from this type of yeah. intercourse that's happening. And you, it's found you, a lot more. Can you give me an example of false Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so a very you... recent scientifically proven one was monkeypox. That the overwhelming oh literature... God. And that, that was, from that was literally... You were, saying, uh, you were projecting a stereotype. It literally became a stereotype against gay men. How is scientific literature a stereotype? <laughs> it was your, what, what are you sor uh, so the peer sourcing review here? Because you you have clearly believed all of the Google articles about how it was only attributed to the gay community. That's my opinion. That's it. Monkeypox was ridiculous. My personal desires do. Okay, what the heck? Okay, okay, let's let's. Uh, I I'm pretty sure one of you might want to jump in before me, so I'll give you guys the uh, the room. <laughs> I've, I've said what I had to say, bro. How is scientific primary peer reviewed literature in established journalism today ever just? What? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. If, if you go on on government, like World Health, Health Organization websites, they will say that homosexual sex produces a seven times higher likelihood of contracting an STD or STI. Seven times more likely. And also, anal sex, you're more likely to contract something. Um, uh, as well, which, again, by the way, newsflash is prohibited in Islam. So, like if you can't connect the dots or even begin to connect the dots, you either have a crazy bias or not even willing to think on this topic. But the fact that she just like she it's funny. She, she mentioned before that you did this debate tactic. She did a debate tactic. I don't know what it's called. But we see it every day in reality where they're like, are you serious? Really? You really think that they just try and make you look stupid or silly? Like, how, how could you believe that they put you in this box of you're a little dummy and uh, all of a sudden no one has to listen to you? It, it's pathetic and egregious, to be honest. Hmm. I think I had to. I said what I had to say on this, especially in the video. Was pretty yeah. transparent in terms of, like, it's pretty obvious. Like, if you ha if you're going into it at a non, in a non bias POV, um, <laughs> it's pretty obvious that like, what the situation is. So, yeah, this is the last question. It's ridiculous. My personal desires do not have a place in Islamic faith. I look like I'm praying in the back. For me, other than like the obvious, I'm part of the LGBT. Another thing that I, I, I just want to quickly, just quickly get out there. They could not even pay us, bro, for our flights. Really? Accommodations. Yes. And, and the best part is they have a Patreon. Really? They literally took parts of our four-hour conversation some prompts and they only release it on patreon you will not even see that on youtube for free for the general public to see so they profited hella off of us and they couldn't even just give us flights or anything so that's unfortunate. i want to ask you guys a question you two because i didn't watch the full video um i've only seen basically what we watched together did they ask anything that's in favor of muslims and in disfavor of the ex-muslims not necessarily in favor there was stuff that there was things that like we completely agreed on, like us on the other side, I guess, in terms like of where there was no contention because it was so obvious. Like, um, the one that they put on the Patreon, I think, right? Yeah, one of them um, was put on Patreon. Another one, we we joked on some jokes, like for example, we all grew up uh, not allowed to eat pork, like all eight of us, just That's stuff an, like that. Yeah, yeah. There's just um, some. I mean, I can't remember all the prompts to be honest. There was there was probably they probably cut out like three or four. Mm. Yeah, but they, why couldn't they put any? any any uh, prompts against the ex-Muslims, like all ex-Muslims are emotional or they only leave for emotional or something that's against them. Why is everything about homosexuality or, you know, Muslims are too strict or Muslims can't get with the program. It's families yeah. change. Families have changed. We're better nowadays. Why? Like that's so hypocritical and, and, and completely disingenuous. You know that brother, the one with the pseudonym Kafir covered up, mm -hmm. he told me after the debate, word for word, that why did they not give us opportunities to talk about the things that we like about Islam? And I was like, what do you wow. mean? And he's like, I still love the charity aspect of Islam. I still love that it's selfless. They didn't wow. even ask us these things. I was like, so it's a lot. Do you really think they would? 
Wow. May Allah guide him back to Islam. He actually seems, I mean, from what I hear, like a very kind-hearted person. 100%, yeah. man. He was, he was for sure. But something, <laughs> just so you have an idea of the people that me and Fayyad were trying to work with here, a couple different things. Atia, Atia was in the last video that I was in the liberals versus uh, conservative Muslims, quote unquote. Um, Atia was actually supposed to be in that video. She was on the set, but one of the conservative Muslims didn't show up, so they had to drop one of the liberal Muslims, and she was the one that got dropped from the liberal side. So it's crazy to think Damn, she was a liberal Muslim? This is, it's crazy to think this was going to be someone that I was going to be against, that they were on my side for this video. So it's, it's something crazy to think about. And then another thing to think about is the fact that, which this, is, this absolutely blew my mind, that after the recording, Rami, they, they were like, Atiyah and I think Nat or um, Harmony and then everyone from the other side, they went to go get lunch together. How could you, how could you go get lunch with someone who disbelieves? Not like not not that I wouldn't go get lunch with one of my friends that's not Muslim, but in terms of someone who left the religion and just argued with you about why leaving the religion is okay, how can you go get lunch with them after arguing with them for four hours? Yeah. That to me Especially, that absolutely blew my mind. Yeah, especially over the Muslims, you know? Like, I'm not saying that. Like, there are women, so I'm not saying they should have gone out with you guys to eat mm. or anything. But, like, especially over the Muslims, it's like Allah spe specifically says in the Quran, do not take the uh, the non-Muslims as protectors or guardians or friends over the Muslims. And they're agreeing with the non-Muslims. They basically mm -hmm. they are like the non-Muslims or the ex-Muslims, the kuffar. And uh, they're, they're siding with them and protecting them, essentially, as well. They're going a step further. They're not being protected by them. They're protecting them said i'm probably never gonna do this again just because of it is a very frustrating experience and stress um alhamdulillah you know two is enough but um um it's about at least a lot at least people knowing that it's important for us regardless of how badly we're going to be represented or how badly they're going to cut it up and whatever agenda they're trying to push regardless as long as like the people who actually understand the faith and understand Islam and are looking at this from a non-biased point of view can actually see that, like, it's very, very obvious when you're looking at this from a non-biased point of view, like, where things are standing. And I think it's important for us to have Muslims who are knowledgeable on their deen, not saying that I'm, I'm not nowhere near as knowledgeable as I want to be or I need to be, but I have at least an understanding of, of Islam um, it's important to have these people representing Islam rather than because if you look at prior to these last two videos that I was in the Muslim representation that was on Jubilee, it's it's like it's not it's not existent. It's people that you like the best the best of them maybe pray five times a day. So yeah. it's just like I think we should continue to put out there um, Muslims who are genuinely on their faith and I want to be better Muslims and people who know a little bit about Islam and are actually practicing rather than just putting anyone that labels himself a Muslim and just put them on this video so they can get a little bit of clout. Yeah. Jad, it's crazy that we genuinely didn't really even want to go, but we kept talking with each other about if not us, then who? Like that yeah, this was one I didn't this one I genuinely I didn't I didn't want to yeah. I really didn't want to go to this, but especially I understood how how difficult the conversation was going to be and I'd rather I'd rather, like, I'm confident in myself enough that I'd rather have me and Fayyad there. And uh, obviously, I'm confident in Fayyad that we can, like, I'm confident in what we'll bring. And I'd rather not jeopardize or, like, take the bet on, on other people that I don't have no idea who's going to go and represent our dean. Yeah. So for Allah. So for Allah. Let's and, go back. Um, yeah, Rami, go on. My bad. Oh, there's more? Yeah, there's a little bit more. I was just going to say that, um, like, everyone who watched, ask yourself the question. If you took any of those uh like the the two muslims that were on your guys' side or the four ex muslims on the other side and put them in a one-on-one -on -one debate live no like no cuts just one-on-one -on -one, no director to stop anyone from talking with either fight or jad who would win in that debate or discussion i think it's clear based on this video who would win because one side was actually prepared and brought arguments and tried to make logical and rational points the other side just literally for lack of better word just cried the whole time how dare you believe this? How could you believe this? I, I, I believe this. That's all I'm going to say. That's not good enough. You don't get the right to interrogate me and then sit here and say what you think, what you believe. I don't, I don't, I don't really care about your beliefs, frankly. Hmm. SubhanAllah. You're right, bro. Let's go back to it.
Man, you look hella just posted up, bro. I love about it. Just chilling. I'm relaxed, man. I had to, I had to sit back to relax myself. I like that, bro. It's, it's 12. Just, guys, context. Y'all are probably going to see this at noon on Monday. It's right now. It's Sunday night. It's 11.40 p.m. for me and Jad. And it's 12.40 a.m. for Rami. So y'all better smash this like button on the stream. It's Muslim and I felt like I didn't have decisions or choices growing up. And when it came to Islam, I remember I questioned things in my religion class. I remember like the imam told me like women, when you go to Hajj, you can't wear um, like body spray, right? Or perfume. And I raised my hand during um, my religious class and I asked why. And I always got met with, well, because the Quran says so. Like be quiet, Janet's a problematic kid asking me questions. Um, I just feel like there's no room really there even without the LGBT community. Okay, quick disclaimer. Don't want to go on too long of a tangent on the side, but when you're in Ihram, the state, when you're performing Umrah or Hajj, men and women both together, we cannot wear scented stuff like soaps and deodorants and stuff. It's not just women. But I do sympathize with her. This whole Allah knows best or Allah said. So this approach isn't really good for everyone, especially from like a parenting or teaching point of view. So we should take that responsibility to learn better and eloquently explain these things better, especially the kids part of me like what you want kind of it felt like doesn't matter mm -hmm. there's no room for it it's just it is what it is and you need to obey it at the end of the day if you commit a sin and you don't seek repentance you're, Allah is going to punish you for it even if your personal desires conflict with that because of that looming threat it does not matter what you want if it goes against what Allah says then you are risking having your bones crushed in the grave or you are risking having your skin burned off of your face it doesn't matter how illogical you think it is if you believe in Islam and Allah says it's bad and you go against that you are putting yourself at a huge risk of a lot of pain and suffering. Yeah, I think it's not that it doesn't have room for our desires, because it does. It just doesn't have room for our compulsions. And I heard this quote, someone said, my religion is perfect, but I'm not. You have to allow Islam to teach you that you've blurred the lines between your desires and your compulsions and the things that you actually need out of life. So it's really hard to be connected yes. to God if you're connected to all these things that are calling you, pulling you different directions. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. So, <laughs> does your standard for haram and halal vary at all? What would you base your standard off of? How were you taught those standards? Um, I learned them from Quran, Quran or from my upbringing, like if I don't know. So, oh yeah, yeah. So, I think everything you're saying is valid and I think you can also believe all these things even just like outside of Islam. Like I think these principles have existed like throughout time, other religions, other philosophies. No, they haven't. What is this man talking about? And so my question is like when it comes to the more sort of confusing like i was raised i'm not allowed to eat pork okay so that's a, like look how he brought that up like it's heard, something yeah. like no, so yeah. unique that he's not allowed to eat pork like, <laughs> <laughs> the, the people who don't pray five times a day uh, don't i eat think pork. at one point somebody told me that was because they're not safe to eat or like you know it's dirty point being absolutely there are moments it, like you can you can definitely live your life that way but my question is like at what point do you question those those nuances those like those confusing yeah, well, points first First, I question yeah, why I'm questioning it. It's okay. like, why do I want to have a different answer than what's written here? First, I question that. Mm, okay. And then I'll do research and I'll say, okay, well, how were people living like before my time, before my parents, before my grandparents? And why didn't they choose to eat this animal? Well, maybe because it eats its own fecal matter or it mm -hmm. eats its children, I mean, you know, its, its okay. own fetus and stuff like right. that. Well, I understand what I'm saying is like, how do you deal with the, the logic of it? Because yeah, so, there's many ways to argue around it. It's quite, literally, guys, oh my God. Yeah, he's such a hypocrite, bro. Why doesn't he ask himself the, the same question? Why is he okay with homosexuality? Why does he not ask himself, why am I okay with homosexuality? Is there a possibility it's immoral? Am I just following what society tells me is right or wrong? He is such a hypocrite, it's, it's crazy. He literally just wants to interrogate and, uh, and question any single Muslim who believes whatever about Islam and has a moral uh, standing and, and just throw them under the category of they, they were raised like this, don't you ever question? Don't you ever want to experiment? Don't you ever think logically why? Do you ever ask yourself where morality even comes from logically? Is it objective? Is it consequential? Is it subjective? Is it relative? Like if you're such a philosopher on the subject all of a sudden, why, why don't you bring up these topics? Why don't you discuss it intellectually instead of just questioning everyone and interrogating everyone? This guy specifically, I'm sorry, I have no respect for people like this. Like If he's going to sit on a, some kind of moral high ground, you have to justify it. And it's pathetic that I sit there questioning everybody. Where does your objective morality come from? It's those people that, yeah, you're right, bro. It's these people that they don't have genuine questions. They'll ask you a question. And then once you respond, they'll ask you another irrelevant question. And they'll just like, they love mental gymnastics. And there's just this debate, yeah. bro. Like, it's it's kind of like one of the tricks. And I'm not comparing these people to a shayateen. So I don't want y'all to think that I'm slandering them. But that's how shaitan actually makes us, I guess, 
forget Allah and become heedless with waswas. Shaitan will give you one intrusive thought, one doubt. And then when you logically answer it, Shaitan will give you another doubt. So it's one of the oldest textbook tricks of the devil that he gets you to have one thing after another thing after another thing. And to solve that isn't necessarily to logically do it because there's always going to be one more thing logically that might make you feel uneasy. But it's to understand like, where are all these things coming from and getting to the root of it? Why do you have an issue with these things to begin with? So it's kind of like, you know, these women will say, for example, Islam forces you to wear hijab. I don't want to do that. I want to wear what I want, right? But it's like, ask yourself, this whole thing that I want, where did that even come from? Is this generally your choice or are you conditioned and programmed by your surroundings and society? And they kind of brainwashed you to think that here's what you want. What if it, your fitra, your predisposed condition, without any other conditioning whatsoever, would actually prefer to be in hijab? Yeah, that's a great point. And I want to give one example, be an amazing point. I want, I, I need people to understand. I need people to understand. Imagine there was a man who used tactics, methods, persuasion, society to try and uh, teach a woman why she should love him and be with him. They would call that coercion. They would say that's disgusting. They would say that's manipulative. But all of a sudden, when all of society and the different industries um, for retail that uses women, as Jad was mentioning before, even cars, car dealerships and companies will use women in their, in their, in their videos for some reason. Obviously, makeup industry, the corn industry, and all these disgusting industries, they will beautify women in a specific way that sets a precedent and a standard for how you should look and dress. And if you don't, you feel out of place. How was that not population and coercion in the same exact form? And why are you okay with that? Showing up, dressing how you're dressing with the makeup that you're wearing, saying what you're actually defending the same people who coerced you. And if a, if a victim of, of, of a man who coerced her was defending him, you would say that this is some kind of Stockholm or that she's so lost she doesn't even know she's being a victim. Poor girl, poor girl. You you women actually are the poor women. I, I genuinely feel bad for you because you think that you chose to do this. But you were actually coerced into thinking it was your choice. And that's the worst you know type of manipulation that exists. Mm -hmm. Wow, subhanAllah. Let's resume this. Essentially, yeah, there's a lot of things that you may not understand why something is not, essentially what you're saying is if something is not allowed and you don't understand why it's not allowed, how do you kind of go about being okay with this thing not being allowed? If God is telling us not to do something or to do something, even if we don't understand the wisdom behind it, it's the fact that we know that he's the most knowledgeable. So we trust in the fact that whatever he's telling us to do or not to do, that is the best thing for us. Blind, blind loyalty. Yeah. So blind loyalty. So, um, in terms uh, of, yeah, so because we believe I, that he's the most knowledgeable. Oh my God. Like, bro, he just described a very logical line of thinking. You have something that is all knowledgeable, that is all wise, and that is also all truthful, that will not lie. You can trust the answer they give is perfect. That's blind faith. He literally described a logical line of thinking. Now, whether we have proof for God in Islam, that's a different topic. But for you to assume a blind faith is so pathetic and disingenuous, and it shows that they're not even on... The, like they need to go back to the basics. They're not even on the level to discuss these these mm -hmm. big topics. They're questioning all these big things. Sometimes, and this is not disrespectful towards them. I don't or I don't mean for it to be disrespectful towards them. I can't adv uh, understand advanced physics. That doesn't mean I go in and question physics. How does how can a photon be in two places at once? How can a photon travel for the from the sun and hit my face instantly at the same time? How does I, I don't believe this. I can't do that just because I don't understand the advanced physics doesn't mean it's thing here because you don't understand it and you're questioning it left right and center doesn't mean it's wrong maybe you need to build up a foundation and a basis to be able to even understand these things and have a intellectual discussion about it i think that's the worst part they they brought honestly probably intellectually speaking the the, the worst possible people and that's no disrespect to them that's no on, I, i'm sorry listen listen you guys need to listen no disrespect towards you guys okay it's jubilee's fault they set up a big <laughs> And they had you guys come on. That's not your fault. Okay? And I love you guys. Sorry. <laughs> Let's get back into it, bro. <laughs> understand something? I'll ask someone of more knowledge. And if they can't give me an answer as to why something is the way that it is, then we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet know what's best. And at that point, I believe put my faith in God. That's what faith is. I, 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 there's there's just a, a small hiccup in both of your like scientific method here, which is that 
why don't get me started bro this man's acting like the scientific method is like the objective measuring stick of reality yeah and what jad said wasn't even scientific it was not <laughs> even scientific it was deductive <laughs> bro. Hey, am i questioning and then then there's your part if i don't get the right answer or an answer that makes sense to me i keep asking i keep asking i keep asking but if you don't get it then there's this kind of cognitive dissonance that now needs to exist i think i think i think like a good way to put it is like part of existing as a human being is questioning everything that's how we developed everything that's how we grow and adapt i want to add something really quick i know that like there's been a lot of questions with what he said especially just saying like that's blind faith i think that there is like i see your point but there's a lot of merit and like i agree that like meaning of life is questioning things however if you keep questioning everything you're going to have the most doubtful horrible untrusting life in Absolutely. the entire universe the like the goal is of like the one, one time teach, she right? actually so i think that like we can only question point. some of the things and i think personally from my questioning i have found the answers to which that has led me to trust the god that i believe in and that is why i also believe in the other things that he he tells me to subscribe to because i believe that that is good for me so it's not always that every muslim or anybody who subscribes to religion is like blindly believing in everything no they have a trusting relationship with that form of god or that religion or that ideology and therefore they choose to subscribe to other ideals yeah. i totally relate i uh there's a lot of insecurity here um there's there's a lot of doubt um there's a lot of thinking i just i i think it is a much more difficult and much more noble path to take uh, you know, through the chaos, through the unknown, um, through the lack of, of prescription, through questioning, um, rather than just kind of taking the carrot and the stick of heaven and hell and, and saying that that's, you know, those are my answers and, and that brings me comfort. I, I think that there are paths to <laughs> being a good human um, outside of religion. And I believe earnestly that those paths are much harder to take. My question to you would be like, where do you draw the line? We all draw the line where- Bro, um, that's not even what I asked. They cut it off so, yeah, it's obvious. Obviously, yeah. yeah. Morality yeah, is. Yeah, I feel like there's like a general right. sense of morality. Right. So, yeah, 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 right. So general I'm saying if we were all left to just decide what is okay and what is not okay, do you guys not see that it would just be left to individual opinions? No, I think there's I think there's like a pretty basic understanding just as a human of what's right and wrong. I'm just a really scientific person. I'm going to do my research. I have engineers for parents. So that gives me peace. Me it's, too. Yeah, so it's my different kind of peace. I don't think people are just atheists or non-religious people are running rampant without a set of rules. I think just to be a good person, religion aside, there's just pretty standard things. That and we are done, ladies and gentlemen. Like who determines what these standard things are? That's exactly what we're trying to get. It's it's so stupid. It's like in bro, like if I if I were to ask them this question, it wouldn't make it into the final cut. But like, let's take you know 1939, 1940 Germany. Like they had their own beliefs, their time, their place, their relative morality. Obviously, they didn't all agree, but you know, they had that general belief. As human beings, they all had a general belief about morality. Our general belief about morality is wrong. And the Muslim's general belief about morality is, 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 so would you say using this line of thinking that their beliefs were morally justified because they generally believed that at the time? Exactly. Like it, it's so pathetic. And actually, I like the point that the, the guy made about uh, like the scientific method, blah, whatever, whatever, not just taking the carrot and the stick. Islam actually encourages logical, rational thinking. It actually encourages reflecting, reflecting and pondering and questioning. And like, where does he think the scientific method came from? It mm -hmm. came from the Muslims and they used ayat from the Quran like, you know, Allah asked, do they not look at the she camel and see how it was constructed? That, you know, makes you wonder, how was it constructed? Maybe I can find that out. Do they not see how Allah raised the 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 sky? I forget the exact wording. No, and a whole sky and whatever. Okay, maybe we should go look at how that actually works. And the Muslims did that. That's where uh, algorithms came from. That's where optics came from. That's where... Yeah. medicine and all these different uh, sciences that flourished came from and the scientific method as a whole so what he just described uh it, naturally is is islamic mm -hmm. i mean alhamdulillah i think we, we I said think we that, that, was, that was very uh, what a wonderful point to end it on alhamdulillah yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I know you were there, so you're probably tired of it. I'm just saying you for the first time, so my anger is just like oh, sprouting yeah. out now. You guys got okay. a lot of it out during that four-hour discussion. I'm just getting it out now, alhamdulillah. But, yeah, everyone uh, everyone that's been watching and everyone, everyone that's texting me and everything is just like, bro, I don't know how you guys were so patient. I'm so frustrated watching this. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, bro, believe me, we were boiling inside when we were there, bro. Just, you have to... <laughs>
if you if you release that not it just looks not to mention numbers. when we exited that studio bro we got an amber alert saying there's literally a grade five hurricane like literally about oh like God, obliterate yeah. la it's and we're just like damn our flights are probably gonna be canceled too so all in all 10 out of 100 would not recommend you know but may Allah bless all the viewers that have benefited from this inshallah if you did enjoy this content please consider using the limited time that is not guaranteed in our lifespan to learn as much as we can about Islam and the truth and to convey from that, even if it's one ayah, as the Prophet says. And trust me when I tell you this, the returns on this are going to be astronomical in the Akhirah. Like just learning about Islam and sharing it with people, it's so simple and it's so easily palatable because it's the truth and the truth isn't something that has to be convinced. It isn't something that has to be proven. It isn't something that has to be groomed or programmed or conditioned into you. So understand that we have a very finite amount of time in this life. Spend as much of it as you can, keeping your intentions renewed and learning Islam and sharing it with people. But if you want to do a little bit extra, support us, share this video, like everything that you can, inshallah, helps. But brothers, is there anything that you guys want to add? Yeah, I have one announcement. I don't have all the details. And alhamdulillah, I think, I think it's October 21st. I3 is hosting the ARC convention. It's an event for Muslims. Muhammad Ajab is going to be there. Abdullah Andalusi is going to be there. And a bunch of other great speakers. It's going to be here somewhere in the GTA. I believe it's in Mississauga. So stay tuned, inshallah. If there is a, a link, we'll put it in the description. And stay tuned for further videos or go to i3institute.ca or i3institute Instagram. Check it out, inshallah. And I'm going to be there. Hopefully, Fadin on Hill will be as well. But inshallah, we will see and update you guys as we go. It's about a month away from now. So we got plenty of time. See you guys there, inshallah. Inshallah. Um, so number one, Anhel is alive and healthy. Allah my God. It's just like, what, 6 a.m. for him right now where he is. So unfortunately, he couldn't make it on this. But number two, good news. Me, Rami, and Anhel will be together in an undisclosed location. Not going to say where. Very soon, inshallah. So expect a lot of in-person videos coming up. We're going to be back on the channel. 2023, we're taking over, inshallah. And Jad, you're always welcome, bro. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Just like guys, always for inviting me. And um, allowing us to speak. And it was an honor going in that video with you. And um, yeah. inshallah, it was of benefit to at least one person. Alhamdulillah. Allahumma amin. Rami, with that being said. Allahumma atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina adhab al-nar. And we will see you on the next one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.